Fighting out of the blue corner from Tottenham, London, England, Vidal Riley. He stands at a height of six foot two, weighing in at 201 pounds. From the blue corner, he's wearing black and red trim trunks. Fighting out of London, England, for City. Where we're from is how it ends. Dead, prison, or both. That's, that's where, where it is. Where you are now, this is what we call the ends. This, these areas are called, that's what happens there. So, um, I was aware of that. And I thought that's not gonna happen to, to my kids. Neither my son or my daughter. I just remember being in the living room and just working with my dad. I remember being in the living room or just going to work and practicing way more than I know any other child that was practicing at that time. And that is what, again, has got me where I am today. You see a lot of father and son boxing relationships. It's like the father still sees them as the kid punching the kangaroo or the kid that's just, you know, running around that in the house. He understands I'm a man in my own right, but what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. What needs to be done needs to be done. So that always remains. But how you communicate and get that across is, is the important thing. And that's why we don't have any conflict because I know he's only telling me what's good for me and what's in my best interest. And he's not talking down to me. He's only telling me what will prevent me from being embarrassed under them lights and me and him hate embarrassment. I don't know where I would be today if he wasn't around, I'm telling you. I watch my parents, they both work hard. Do you know what I mean? They both worked hard. It wasn't, no one's lounging around. No one's like waiting for anything to come to them. So a lot of structure in the household, regardless of what's going on on the road. But I wouldn't want to grow up anywhere else. Like how I am is how I am because I grew up there. Like I, I value it to the fullest and I would never change it. Now the stuff is in, so ingrained into me that we're, we're ahead we're ahead and now it's just little nuances that are really going to take me through but everything is already there because of that foundation that was built from the beginning. I'm Vidal Riley, professional boxer, um, social media influencer. My name's Derek Riley, um, I'm Vidal's father and head trainer. Okay. I think winning my first national title and my first Great Britain title. I think I fell in love with the success of it too much because the following year led to my first defeat. And my dad always said, oh, you win the school boys, which is the national championships. I won my first national championships at 12 years old. And he said, you'll win them, you'll win them. And I didn't really, I didn't I believe him, but you know, as it was going along and I was detonating, stop one guy, stop another guy, then I actually win it. Then I win the Great Britain Championships. I'm like, well, you said I'm gonna win it. I won it, and it wasn't even that hard. And I'll be honest, it wasn't that hard. And then he said to me, well, there's a guy, there's a guy in a couple weights below you. You gotta watch out for him because he's similar to you. He's good, he knows what he's doing. I thought, well, you just see, I just done this easy. I have nothing to worry about. And you know how complacency comes up to get you. But I'd say I definitely fell, I fell in love with the success. I wouldn't say I fell in love with boxing, but I fell in love with the pat, the pats on the back and people saying, oh, you're the best in the country. Like, you're the best in Great Britain. I'm like 12 years old. Like 12 years old, I'm thinking I'm the best in the country. Like, I can't believe it. Like, my dad's been saying it, it's here. And I just kind of settled into it and fell in love with that. Um, 
But then when I lost, I guess the love went straight away. I said, <laughs> I said, yeah, maybe this thing isn't as sweet as I thought it was because everyone turns their back on you when you lose. But it's not all about in the ring. It's also learning how to deal with those things, dealing with people patting you when you're winning and then turning away from you when you lose. And then you can turn up to certain things before and no one, everyone's happy. And then you just become the second, your second best now. So the second best you might in boxing, the only two guys in the ring you're lost so yeah the first time i fell in love was in when i was 12. i lost my final amateur fight and was come driving back from um up north and he said to me you gotta really look at what you're doing now he said and at this time i just lost so i'm really in that place where i'm like i don't want to hear criticism I don't want to hear anything. I don't. I just want to be upset by myself. And you say, look, you got to turn pro now, or you really gonna have to put your foot down if you want to get out of boxing. What you want to get out of it? And sometimes that was the first time in my life where, when he was giving me one of those speeches, I knew he wasn't exaggerating. Like I was old enough to realize he's right. You know, he's actually right. Like this is. It is kind of a make or break. It's not a make or break. Obviously, I could go and box. I could have more amateur fights if I wanted to. But to achieve what we want to achieve and to stay on the trajectory of progression that we use, we're use, used to operating on, he's like, you got to make your decision now. you got to really knuckle down here or you got to turn pro and continue and do what you said you wanted to do from when you was a, when you was a child. And when he had that speech with me, when I was laying in bed when I got home, I thought, he's right. I can't pretend. I can't act like I didn't hear it. I gotta know what I'm doing. And I say, from that conversation to present day, that's when I've really moved forward. And that's where I've really progressed and taken the sport seriously. When he got to about, I think it was, 15, 16, he said to me, I'm not boxing anymore. And he expected me to go off on him. You see, there's lessons there. He expected me to go off on him. I just said, okay, don't box. And then there was, just, there was sort of, you know, like crickets, chirp, chirp, chirp. There was a silence. Then, because that's my wisdom. Because I, listen, although it was my vision, yeah, I thought to myself, this is such a dangerous sport. If he's going to do it seriously, he has to want to do it for himself. Because I don't want that on my hand, on my on my conscience. I could live with myself. If he went in there and I was forcing him to do it, and he got injured in there, I couldn't live with myself. Okay, so I just let him do his thing. I had faith, and then all the lessons that I've instilled in him over the years, it came back to him. He said, "Dad, I'm going to box again." What did that moment feel like? It was, it was excellent, you know. It was excellent. And it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy, it was hard. Um, but yeah, good lessons. Uh, yeah, I, I was happy. I was real happy about that. I said, you know what, I need to get back into boxing properly, do it properly, and see it through. And that's when there's no force now. You know what, Vidal, if you're gonna do this, you gotta do it for yourself. you got to believe in the ups, ups and downs. The downs are only as down as you make them. It's true, and that's the truth. It's only as down as you make them. Because there's always something to seek in those situations that is positive. And um, you just have to program your mind that way. And, and when you do that, you get out of those little down periods, and you're back. As, as again, we're, we're all humans, so there's times you lay down and you think, Oof. Don't know, man, this is seeming a bit unlikely. It's seeming a bit unlikely. But then, when I start thinking like that, you got to reflect. Because I'm one of those people, I just live in the moment. I don't sit down on my credentials. Like, I don't always check the board over there, like, oh, yeah, you see this? Yeah, like, I won this. I don't do that. But sometimes, when you're feeling like that, that's what it's about. It's about going back to those things. My dad calls it some, having something to hang your hat on, you know? Um, you have to go back to those things because you don't you achieve them they're not they haven't vanished 
and you get caught up in this one little moment and it's like look how many mo look what you've done look what you've actually done look what you've actually achieved and they're not it's not a fluke you don't become an eight-time national champion by a fluke you, you it just doesn't happen so then you start to go you know what these things are happening and you remember things people have said to you you know world champions have things that world champions have said to me or oh, you you hit oh you know you're, you're one of the most difficult people i've ever been in there with and da -da 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 -da, um, stuff like that and you think there's no reason for them to say that they don't have to say that they, they don't owe me anything like dust your shoulders off and get back to the program and that's how i operate my journey is not a journey of failure because i think there's a lot of things that's happened in my life where if i was supposed to go down and out it would have happened already. I genuinely believe that whether it's injury, whether it's outside of the ring, there's been things that's happened to me where if someone's supposed to go down, they would go down. And I think I get confidence in the fact that no matter when things go left, they always end up going right. And they end up going further right than they were before they went left. And so now when things don't go my way, I'm like, something special is about to happen something even bigger is about to happen because that just seems to be the pattern of my life but i try to minimize through whatever i can do things not going the way they should go me and my dad had a conversation a couple months ago i said as long as we're true to ourselves and we work hard we're gonna do everything that we need to do and that is our method we just stay true to ourselves no one can replicate what we do because no one else is me no one else can be me. No one else can be him. No one else can be anyone else but themselves. So you can't copy us. And if you do, you're already heading down the wrong path because you're just not us. And I think we have entire confidence in that. We believe in ourselves so much that we don't need to try and be like anyone else. Can you learn from other people? 100%. Of course, that's why people are on the planet. But that has to only be to a certain extent. You still got to have belief in your own system, a belief in you, what you do. And I think that's why we're in a great position because there's a lot of self-belief within the team and that's where belief has to begin, really. You can't be looking for it from the outside because it's not always going to be there. The belief here is strong and it's been strong and it's only getting stronger as the team can see me reciprocating the energy and progressing with what's being offered to me. When he turned pro, when he turned pro, I thought to myself, because look, I used to tell everyone that's willing to listen, my son, excellent fighter. He's going to do something in this game. And I'm not like most people. This is what, it's hard to understand. I'm not like most people. I'm not biased when it comes to that sort of thing. Brutally blunt. <laughs> I'm brutally blunt when it comes to that sort of thing. So when he turned pro and I saw the way things were shaping up, and he was in Las Vegas and, you know, I've, in, 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 where I live, I've got pictures of all the greats on my wall. And he said, Dad, look, I'm with Holyfield. Dad, look, I'm, and I thought, yeah, it, it's taking shape. Now it's taking shape. Because people used to mock me. Probably some still do. But that's, that's when I thought to myself, you know what? We're blessed. And we're going to do big things in this game. We're going to do big things in this game. Um, and I know it because... I should be dead now. I shouldn't be talking to you now. Yeah, now we're going deep. Yeah, I should be dead. On three occasions when they lost my life. And like V said, it's lying in bed. I think to myself, you know, I look at the reference points. And I think I'm here for a purpose. I'm here for a purpose. Um, and I know we're going to fulfill that purpose. I don't, for context, would you be willing to share any of that? What, um, what nearly dying? Yeah. Well, yeah. When, when I was a boy, um, I was involved in a near fatal car accident. Damaged me, broke my arms, broke my, my pelvis, um, collarbone smashed to bits, um, cracked skull. Um, and I remember uh, when I was recovering in hospital, I was in the hospital for nearly four months, and uh, the doctor said to me, that the fire brigade told them that they've seen people with less injuries that have passed away. Yeah, I was a young boy, nearly died. Um, 
I suffered a stroke. Okay, I'm putting this in context. I suffered a stroke while I was driving. So when I look at the boxing world and I see people saying, oh, you know, I'm the best trainer in the world. Who have you trained and this and that? And I just look at it and I just think, ah, oh, man, you don't understand me. Intense individual, I don't live my life in fear. And I'm very blunt, very honest. I say to V, yeah, he's my son, but I say to him, I'm honest with him. If he was no good, I'd tell him. I say, you're not gonna make it in this game. I've seen too much, it's too hard. But he's got, he's got what it takes. He's got what it takes to make it in the game. He hasn't always had it. He didn't have the mentality. Okay, so um, you could say I was the visionary and then he, he didn't really buy into what I was saying until three years ago. Now he knows what I'm saying because he's a man now. And that's the beauty of it. I was talking to a boy and now he's a man. Now he looks at me different and he understood, Dad, I understand what you mean. Beautiful thing. I think I've been blessed with too much skill, too much potential to not be a world champion. So many things can get in the way of that, that isn't for like the eyes can see, but it's just something I believe I can really do. And I look around and I think if these guys can do it, surely, surely I can do it. Like, and that just reinforces my belief that if you guys are there and I feel that I can, I can definitely get there and I can, be, I can be a world champion. I think that is when, that is I think where my p potential, that is me reaching my potential. Not everyone's potential level is the same and there's no shame in that, that's just life. But I think my potential is world champion. I look at the world champions, I've been watching world champions all my life. Um, he can be a world champion. Undisputed, or like when he starts getting into the undisputed and this and that, you, you never know because his life gets in the way. But he can, listen, if, it, if he doesn't win the world title, we've done something wrong, obviously. It's well within his grasp. And you might look at me and think, what, what makes you think that? There's people that he's beaten with ease that are on the cusp of world titles on the cusp of world titles. People he's beaten, people he's sparred with. Multiple world champions, dealing with them. So, you know, that's, that's my gauge. That's my barometer and I think, well, I'm right. If you can do that, then there's no reason why you can't do it for yourself. I think, I truly believe that I could become a world champion when I moved back here. I think when I moved back here last year, Started training with my dad again, training with my strength conditioning coach, Leon Williams. Um, that's when I really started to believe it because I knew I was getting what I needed. I don't feel like something, I didn't feel like something was missing. I felt like we've, we've got the team now. We've got the structure in place. The only person that's gonna ruin this is me. And I don't intend on ruining it because I wanna do it. So when, when I got back and I really started working properly and getting myself back, it felt like, oh, I'm, I'm back. This is what's going to get me to be a world champion. I, I can be a world champion. Boxing is a metaphor for life. Okay, and I instilled that in him. In boxing, you don't get what you deserve. You get what you can negotiate. Life's the same. You get hit, you get hurt, you got to carry on. Wherever you are, this is my belief, wherever you are outside the ring, okay, when you get in that ring, it's amplified, okay? If you're weak-minded, faint-hearted, outside the ring, when you get in that ring, it's gonna amplify that. So um, I was a top amateur. So my journey from amateur to pro can, the pinnacle of my amateur career is international tournaments, world championships, Olympics, 
that is my path that was my path you know and that's not for everyone some people have a few amateur fights turn over professionally they have to start low at the bottom of the pile and slowly work their way to the top of the professional ranks through the hard work I'd, and i do say it is it's my dad as, as an amateur definitely the hard work is all done from him it was from his side through his hard work i was a top amateur and i was always looked at as a pro olympic hopeful uh, i went to the youth olympics so it's like you know i'm already on that path i'm already with team gb i'm already in sheffield training alongside the biggest names and my transition it started to look less like i was going to the olympics because a few losses were coming in at the wrong times you know the, the, the fights i should have won i was just letting them slip and it makes that olympic um dream seem a bit further away but you still can't discredit the the eight national titles the european medal the the youth olympic is still a lot of pedigree so fortunately even with those hiccups i already established myself so much um as an amateur not only in the uk but internationally that when i turn professional i i always believed that i'd, I'd be in a privileged position and that's before obviously the big big thing happened with me and and training with uh, ksi So if I'm if I'm Jake Paul and I just like boxing, I'm already a millionaire. Of course, I can get the best training in the world. I can train full time, get the best facility, fly wherever I need to fly to to progress quicker. But you can't skip, and that's the I think that's the beautiful thing about boxing because in life there's a lot of things that you can kind of skip over. People don't really get found out for doing things incorrectly, or if you're in a certain position, you can just cheat it. You can kind of cheat it. Boxing, you can't. Because once you get in the ring, it's only both, it's only you two in there. If your opponent hasn't been cheating and you have, it only ends in one one outcome. If you've been slacking and your opponent hasn't been slacking, you'll get found out. You can't cheat it. You can't cheat it. You can't cheat it. You will be found out at some point. The only way to not get found out is to quit. When we're in there and it's my brain against yours, I'm going to come out on top. I just know more. It doesn't matter how much money you got, how much, what training you have. I've been doing it. And that's what boxing's about. It's what you've been doing. Not what your coach has been doing. Not what your mate has been doing. It's about what you have been doing. And that's why it's one of the finest sports, because you can't cheat it. The easiest way to put it is KSI is who he is because when I was winning national titles, he was making videos. What he, what I was doing when I was boxing and traveling up and down and winning these national titles, he was making YouTube videos, right? So that's what he does. That's what he specializes in, you know? And he stepped into boxing in 2017, but because of what he does, creates so much following and so much attention, as opposed to me within the community yeah everyone knows you but it's not televised it's not on a big scale you know no one puts it on the youtube channel and gets millions of views as an amateur no matter if you're the best amateur in the world you still won't get a million views you know that's just that's how it is what he done accumulated attention and a lot of people confuse attention with quality just because 10 million people watch what you do doesn't mean it's good it just means you've managed to get them to watch what you're doing and I feel like that's where the line blur between the YouTube boxing world and the traditional boxing world is the numbers, the the, fin the finances, they are mistaken for quality. And it they're not linked. They the, the fan base was built from something completely different, not because they've been boxing for a ton of years. I've been boxing since I was six years old in the boxing gym, right? That cannot be replaced by subscribers or followers it's just not the same thing you know it's a completely different thing but less people cared so it's like it doesn't count if if it's less views no it don't count it counts it's just not seen do you think that if i don't fight jake paul i'll never have a big payday no true yeah 100 yeah. percent. and that's, I mean, exactly, the YouTube and that's yeah. exactly it yeah, yeah most of the everyone that jake fights they get offered the most money they're ever going to get whether it's because they were in their retirement and they can't get that funds again or whether it's because they've just got into boxing as a YouTuber 
and they can make that money the prize he can hook them onto that prize because where else am i gonna get it i see myself being in wembley stadium i see myself being in vegas and achieving paydays that jake is not gonna offer me so for me to fight you for money i don't need your money and it's also about keeping my path clear i want my boxing career to have a certain narrative to it and i don't need it to be mixed and matched with a youtuber here and then a, a real fight here i don't want it to be like that i want it to be steady i want it to be professional the whole time and i don't need any influence or names really on my boxing record i don't need it i'm i'm ready on my own path and um i like I, listen i like jake and i tell him all the time he's my friend because he helps me out and whether he wants to or not he helps me out but I just want him to do his thing there, and I do my thing here. We don't need to fight each other. Toughest adversity in my career. Injury. I'd say it's injury, it's not losing. I'd say it's injury, um, because that is something that, when the injury came, it was, um, talking about my back injury most recently it was frustrating because I was like I'm ready to take the sport seriously now like all these years I didn't and now I'm, I am I'm taking it seriously I'm doing everything that I need to do I'm watching the sport I'm trying my best and now I get injured when I really want it now I get injured I think that was hard to deal with that was tough to deal with because it's like why are you treating why is this happening to me when I'm committing you know but it made me Oh, it's one of the big, biggest blessings that's ever happened to me, honestly, because it gave me that time to grow as a man. And I always say, you're a man first. And if you're a weak man, you're going to be a weak fighter. And I'd say that injury was, it was, uh, in the beginning, I just thought, why, why me? Why me? You know, and you ask yourself that question, why me? And then as I was going through the journey of it and getting to the middle and the end of it, I said, this injury weren't to ruin my career. This injury was to, to improve here. His injury was to really touch on here and be prepared for all the successes that's coming. What's my purpose? What do I want to get out of boxing? Yeah, I'm good at boxing. But what do I want to get out of boxing? World champion is not enough. It's not enough. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a pinnacle, but it's not enough. What do I actually want to leave behind? Do you know what I mean? What do I want to create? What brand do I want to create? When people see me, what do I want them to think? I want to make sure I'm not the same as everyone else, but not trying hard to do it by just simply being myself. Um, we live in a world where people want to be like the trend because it's easy. It's easy to fit into a trend. It's easy to just find your, your way by being like someone else, being a knockoff version of someone else. But it doesn't have to be done that way. And the greats never operated that way. They're all different. Muhammad Ali ain't the same as Tyson, but they're both legends. Van der Holyfield ain't the same as Lance Lewis, but they're both legends. They're both respected as highly as each other. If it's not sincere, I don't want it. If it's not sincere, I don't want it. I only want sincerity. I'd rather have 100K subscribers knowing that that 100K, if I said I'm standing here today, come and meet me, they will come rather than have a million and they're like what is this case i'm gonna be and i'm like no they're like cool i'm not coming in. <laughs> what's, the, what's the point in that that doesn't make any sense to me you have to surround yourself with people you wish to you know not be like but at least have the same the same energy you need people that push you need people that want to push for more and i said every member of my team they got goals and then i'm like well they got goals, we got goals, let's all move. And and you need that. You need that, man. You need the people around you to be correct. You need the energy to be right. Everything is energy. I think we're going to be proving a lot of people wrong, even though we're just going to be proving to ourselves what we already know in the short term. I think in the long term, I'm going to change what people think a boxer has to be. I've been, that's what I mean. I've been blessed with that. I know KSI could have trained with anyone. Do you know what I mean? Why did he come to gym box in Stratford to train with me? Why did that responsibility get placed on me? Why is there only a few people in the world that have a big social media following and can actually fight? You know, how did that stumble across me? Because I've been put here to change 
people's minds on what they think boxers have to do. And people always think boxing, you just have to be a boxer. Anything else you do is going to be your downfall. Anything else you do is going to be your demise. No, that's the whole reason I have a team to help me with those other things. But I'm going to change that. I believe that is my purpose in the sport is to change what people think about a boxer and allow boxers to have multiple avenues and still be respected. Right now, it's not respected because no one's done it. That's why I'm here. I believe I've been put in this position to do that. Elite boxing skill, high social media following, do multiple things. I'm still going to dominate in the ring and just show people live your life man live your life just don't cut corners in anything that you do you'll be good and i think that's gonna be my mark that i leave on the sport what what would it mean to see him raise that belt in the ring i'm morbid i'm a morbid man some people say i'm morbid i think i'm just a realist i believe as i said to you earlier i shouldn't be with you i shouldn't be on earth now um it'll mean the world to me i'm not a crier i don't cry but I've got a feeling on that day I might cry, I might cry and I believe that when he achieves, and he might not want to hear this, but I believe it. Um, I believe when he achieves what he's supposed to achieve, then I think that I, my, my spirit's gonna pass on. Morbid, but I don't live my life in fear and that's what I believe. Has it always been beneficial to have like be coached by your dad? Yes, I, I believe so because I, I haven't always been been coached by him full time. Recently is when we we link back up full time again, but just no one knows me better. Do you know what I mean? That and that's the main thing. Yeah, people get twisted. It's not about just about the knowledge. It's no, about it's knowing the fighter. So he's had a lot of good trainers, but sometimes they don't know how to get through to him. He did. He, yeah, did. he did, he and did. Mickey made it. He, Mickey made sure to give him a slap on the back of the legs. Yeah, stop messing in between, about. In between the rounds, yeah. bang, slap on the leg. I'm like, okay. I'm